Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today as we once again come together to remember and to honor Police Officer Eddie Byrne. I'd like to begin by introducing Father Manuel Rodriguez from Presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary Church for our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you tonight. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, once again, we are here to honor a true hero of our community, a young man who at age 22 knew how to become not only a good officer, but also a star of our youth by showing commitment to his duties and selfishness in achieving his service to his city and to his country. We honor him also as a reminder to all of us that our time, our society, our New York and the world still need heroes. Heroes that could be, for especially for our youth, role models in a life of dignity and commitment to service. Let us now listen to the words of the gospel according to St. Matthew. When he saw the crowds, Jesus went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are you who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. And now let's say together, also uniting ourselves to so many family members of so many police officers who have given up their lives for the service of this city and this country. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as we honor the sudden death of our brother Eddie Byrne, show us the immense power of your goodness and strengthen our belief that Eddie Byrne has entered into your presence and will remain in our memories forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father Rodriguez. It's now my privilege to introduce the Police Commissioner of the City of New York, the Honorable Dermot Shea. Good morning, everyone. And again, to the men and women of the 103rd Precinct, past and present, I want to say first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for continuing to honor a hero of the NYPD, Police Officer Eddie Byrne. Family and friends, to the Larry, Steve, to the entire Byrne family. We stand here tonight really as a testament to, to, to proving that Eddie did not die in vain. If you look at where New York City is 32 years later, and, and I hope that you can take some measure of sol solace, Larry and Steve, and that that terrible night, that tragedy set into events something that literally was the first shot in changing New York City. And all the good and all the lives that have been saved, 
is a small piece of Eddie's legacy. We, we, we will never forget. We're here to honor that commitment that we will never forget Eddie, but also to celebrate his life. God bless him, and God bless the Byrne family. Thank you, Commissioner Shea. It's now my pleasure to introduce the President of the PBA, Patrick Lynch. Thank you, Sergeant. This is an important day in the life of the New York City Police Department, in the life of the 103 precinct, and the life of the city. It's the day that we changed this city because a terrible tragedy happened. Police officer, a young police officer, a hero police officer, like many of you who are going on patrol tonight, came, sat on this corner, got executed, and never came home. But that day we said we will remember. But what's important about this day is this ceremony started by fellow police officers from the 103, did roll call, responded here with their radio cars, and, and quietly bowed their heads in remembrance, and look what it's grown to. Because a number of police officers that night, a year later, said, we won't forget, and now it reminds everyone else in this neighborhood why they can live free. So it's an important night in the life of the NYPD, and we will never forget that. It's a day when we remember a hero police officer that gave his life to change the city. But we have other families here as well, and we think of the family that has to go on long after we bury our brother. We think of his father, Matt Byrne, who was always here, became a voice for the NYPD, went out and spoke out on behalf of fellow police officers, police officers like his son. We have Mr. Long here, whose father was killed in the 103 in the 1950s. We have Mrs. Massimillo here, whose husband, a PBA delegate, was killed in the 6-7 precinct. They come here to bow and remember. It's hard for them. It brings back their pain. But by them being here, by us thinking of Matt, Larry, your whole family being here, it gives each one of these police officers the strength to go out and do the difficult job. It gives them the courage. If you can have the courage to go on, they can have the courage to go out. God bless each and every one of you. And thank you, Pat. It's now my pleasure to introduce the 103 Precinct Delegate, Police Officer Patrick Lynch. Early in 1988, New York City, like many other cities, was in the midst of a drug war that seemed out of control. Citizens who stood in the way of drug dealers were verbally threatened, physically attacked, or even killed. There seemed no way to unite the public and the police and, preserve, and reverse this drug epidemic that would change on February 26, 1988. In the early morning hours, police officer Edward R. Byrne, newly assigned to the 103 precinct, was sitting in an RMP on the corner of 107 Avenue and Inwood Street. He was there guarding the house of a family who had defied the drug dealers and agreed to testify against them. At approximately 3.30 a.m., four armed men crept up on both sides of Officer Byrne's RMP. Without uttering a word, they fired into the car, striking Officer Byrne in the head. All four men fled the scene, but six days later were apprehended. Officer Byrne was rushed to Mary Immaculate Hospital, where he died. This cowardly and brazen act by drug dealers was the catalyst that united the police department and communities to work together and find a solution to the drug problem. As a result of Officer Byrne's death, units such as TNT and SNU were created along with the expansion of other narcotics units, some of which are still in existence today. In honor of Police Officer Edward Byrne, 91st Avenue was renamed to Police Officer Edward R. Byrne Avenue. Police Officer Edward Byrne was survived by his father Matthew, his mother Anne, and three brothers. Thank you, Officer Lynch. It's now my honor to introduce former NYPD Deputy Commissioner, and more importantly, the brother of Police Officer Eddie Byrne, Larry Byrne. Good evening, and thank you all uh, for being here. On behalf of myself, my brother Steve, my mom, and the entire Byrne family, I want to thank all of you for coming out once again in the middle of the night to remember a 22-year-old rookie officer 
who most of you uh, never met, but you know his story. <coughs> I want to thank everyone for coming out to remember and honor his service and his sacrifice. Commissioner Shea, thank you. We have Commissioner Bratton with us as well, once again, who comes every year. Uh, continuing a tradition that Judge Brown observed for decades. I want to thank our new Queens District Attorney, Melinda Katz, for being here tonight, and our great U.S. Attorney in Brooklyn, Rich Donahue, for being here, as well as the head of our City Council Public Safety Committee, Donovan Richards, for coming out to show support, not just for Eddie, but for all of our officers who confront dangers every day. I want to thank all of the women and the men of the 103 for once again turning out to remember Eddie and all of the senior members of the executive staff, my former colleagues and good friends who are out here once again tonight, our sisters and brothers in the FDNY who are here, and our colleagues from the Nassau and Suffolk uh, Police Departments who are here, the members of the community who have come out once again and who tomorrow at lunch will do something they've done for 32 years, give out the Eddie Byrne Cop of the Month Awards to uh, heroic officers in Queens South who do incredible things every day to protect this community. As Commissioner uh, Shea said, uh, Eddie's premeditated assassination, while it was a terrible loss uh, for my family and for the larger NYPD family, it was a catalyst for change and a lot of good came out of his sacrifice. And the fact that you all come out here every year, some of you are here for the first time, some of you are here for the 32nd time, uh, I thank you for that. To the retired members of service who come back every year, your presence is greatly appreciated as well as our line of duty families. Eddie had only been in the precinct for about three weeks. He had just come here after finishing his NSU. Many of the cops in the precinct didn't even know him because he was working midnights. Uh, but as Pat Lynch said, the cops in the precinct started this on their own on uh, the first anniversary of Eddie's assassination. And it's grown every year and it's really a beautiful uh, memory of a terrible tragedy. So I thank you all once again uh, to the members of service, particularly of the 103 and all of those who are serving throughout the city tonight. In closing, I want to say thank you, and I want to use the words of my father. <coughs> my father retired NYPD, a Lieutenant Matt Byrne, who served for 22 years, was the last member of our family to see Eddie alive and the last member of our family to speak to Eddie. Uh, Dad was watching what he always did that time of night, which was watch the 10 o'clock news. Uh, Eddie was leaving for work once again from the family home in North Massapequa. And Dad said the same thing to him that night that he had said the uh, several previous nights, have a safe tour, son. The next thing that happened for my family was a knock on the door at 5 a.m. from the police chaplains. That's a knock on the door that no police family ever wants to receive. No good news is delivered at 5 a.m. And that's when we learned that uh, Eddie's tour was not a safe tour and his uh, young life and short career had been cut way too short. Um, but so much good has come in the years that have followed and we live in a very different, better, much safer city today than we did in 1988. And that's the thanks to all of the women and men of the NYPD today and the tens of thousands of retired uh, NYPD officers who served before you for the past several decades to make this city what it is today. So in closing, I thank everyone for coming. And uh, to the women and men of the 103 who will go out on patrol now, <coughs> to our officers who are working all over the city tonight to keep us all safe, have a safe tour tonight and always. Thank you.
And thank you, Commissioner Byrne. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our memorial this evening. I'd like to thank all of you for attending, especially the members of our line of duty families that are here with us. On behalf of the police commissioner, the executive staff, and the Byrne family, I want to ask all of you to please have a safe tour and get home safely. Thank you. Yeah, look, um, Eddie was killed in a premeditated assassination of a police officer on orders of a violent drug gang leader who had been sent back to prison a few days before, Pappy Mason. From his prison cell, he told his lieutenant, they take one of us, we take one of them, we have to send a message to the cops, you have to kill a cop. It was meant as an act of intimidation to law enforcement. It backfired, as we know today. It was a terrible loss of Eddie, but it catalyzed a change that has brought us to where we are today. One thing hasn't changed today, while the city is safer, police officers are still in grave danger. Just earlier this month, three police officers in the Bronx were the subject of an unsuccessful, fortunately, assassination attempt. Someone tried to kill them because they were police officers. It's very important that uh, the parole board in particular, <coughs> our elected and appointed officials, appreciate just what a terrible crime this was and just what a threat to all police officers it was and it continues to be today. So we have to send a message to anyone who would think of shooting or hurting a police officer that you will face maximum legal consequences and you will spend the rest of your life in prison if you try to kill or you kill a police officer. We owe it to our police officers to do that. That's why every anniversary is important, but this year it has heightened importance. December 10th, I told you why was here. When was that? Right. 17 or 18? 16. It's two years. Two years and two, two months. Uh, two years and two months. Uh, uh, oh. 2017.